Hello and welcome to another Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Today we are doing a part four to uh, videos that we've done entitled uh, Touch Not My Anointed. Touch Not My Anointed. And that is a declaration and a decree that the heavens has made in reference to the saints of God in the earth. A reference to the kingdom of God, you know, because everyone that is in the kingdom of God has the anointing. The Holy Spirit is the anointing that sets an individual uh, apart and separates them from the individuals in the earth that do not have the anointing or has not been converted into the kingdom of God. So therefore, that is the presence of God uh, that is abiding and resting upon that individual. So the Lord says that decree toward anyone that does anything to, to that person deceitfully, uh, that causes any type of spell or curse or evil to come toward that person. The Heavenly Father has decreed and declared to touch not my anointed or do my prophet no harm. And if one does do that, we're going to look at what can happen, okay? And um, how, the unfortunately, the wrath of God may be uh, sent from heaven down into that person's life, okay? Upon them, upon their children, and upon all that is attached to them, okay? If they begin to do evil unto anyone that the Heavenly Father has decreed and declared as his anointing, okay? So uh, we're going to take a look at Jeremiah as an example in chapter 20. As we take a look at Touch Not My Anointed, the revelation the Heavenly Father gave us through His Word, His decree, and His declaration. And before we go into our Bible study uh, revelation reading, we're going to take a look at a psalm, Psalm 105. Psalm 105 is actually the initial psalm where that verse is captured. And so that's Psalm 105, and we're going to see in uh, verse 15. And it says, saying, Touch not my anointed. See, this is when uh, the children of Israel were, uh, they first came out of captivity under the king Pharaoh in uh, Egypt. When they first came out of captivity, and the Heavenly Father began to reveal himself to them as their creator, as their Lord, as their God, as their master. And he set them aside. He set them apart from every individual in the earth, every other individual. And he proclaimed that they were his anointed. And so, therefore, he set them apart from any other individual. And as he said for, you know, those to not harm or do anything to his inherited people. Okay? And now that also includes anything that pertains to them in their life period. Okay? Okay? You are not to come uh, upon them with any type of evil or any type of curse or anything. And if that does happen, then the Heavenly Father, He does take action. So, another verse we can see that in is Psalm 35. And this is another song. We're just taking a look at what some of the scriptures say about touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. Okay, so Psalm 35, verse 8 says that... Uh, let destruction come upon him at unawares, and let his net that he has hid catch himself into that very destruction. Let him fall. Now, I'm going to go back up to verse 7 for the reason why David is saying this, because this is a psalm that's written by David also. He said, For without a cause have they hid for, and for me their net in a pit, which without a cause they have digged for my soul. And so you see, this is why David said that. He didn't just randomly say that. And he was saying that toward enemies. Enemies of the camp and enemies of the camp of the kingdom of God. Okay. Nevertheless, because anybody that has a problem with someone that is anointed and something uh, that an individual is saying that is anointed or part of the kingdom of God, they place themselves in a position to be in enmity with God against God. And when you're uh, against God, you're fighting against God. When you fight against a, a person that's walking in the authority of the anointing, 
and that is decreeing or declaring what thus says the heavens, then you are fighting against God. You're not fighting against that individual, and God will prevail over you. Okay, so then uh, another reminder he gives us in the New Testament. And this is to the new disciples, you know, because this is not just to uh, and for, it wasn't just for the Old Testament. It wasn't just for the children of Israel whenever they came out of bondages. No, it's for also the saints today as we have come out of bondages under the enemy in the enemy's camp also as the Lord delivered us out. He also decreed and declared the same thing for us as saints and anointed in his kingdom. And we see... In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, uh, let me see, chapter 1, 2 Thessalonians, I'm going to start with uh, verse 4. So that we ourselves glory in you and the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. So God is aware of the fact that we will be persecuted and we will have tribulations in the earth, okay? But he tells us this, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, okay? That you, be, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. Now again, as I stated on this channel, once an individual has been converted into the kingdom of God, you are a saint of God, you're part of the heavenlies, and judgment of God is justice by God, okay, for you. Because you have come, you have humbled yourself under the mighty hand of God. Therefore, he is your justifier, okay? He is your judge. So he brings justice and judgment for you on behalf of the kingdom and on behalf of his uh, relationship with you. So then it says here in verse 6, it says, Seeing. He also says, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So God consider, considers it righteous. It is a righteous thing. It is, it is a part of salvation. It is a part of the benefit of being in the kingdom and covenanted with God. That he would deal with those that bring trouble into your life. Okay, It is considered righteous with him to distribute that trouble back into their lives so and to you who are troubled rest with us when the lord jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not god and that obey not the gospel of our lord and savior jesus christ hallelujah so there is a recompense to individuals whenever they do uh do something evil toward the kingdom of God. And I just want to make that clear because I know sometimes the saints of God can go through so much in the earth, but there is a recompense. There is a God who sits high and looks low and he can see everything and in the hearts of every individual. He knows it all and he has our back continually. Hallelujah. And I'm just going to stop right here and pray and thank you, oh Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. We thank you for your vindication mightily. We thank you for your word that decrees and declares that touch not my anointed and do your prophet no harm as which you have stated in your word. And as individuals do something evil toward us, toward our children, toward anything that belongs to us, anything that you have given us in the kingdom of God, anything in this earth that belongs to us that has our name on it, are attached to it that you have decreed and declared as ours to heavenly father and as the enemy tries to come up against the god almighty you will intervene yes you will you will come forward mightily on behalf of your saint and on behalf of your word that you have decreed and declared and we thank you and praise you for it in jesus christ's mighty name hallelujah okay so we're going to look at an example in the book of jeremiah chapter 20 and we're going to start with uh, 19, chapter 19, verse 14. It says, Jeremiah came from Tuffet, where the Lord had sent him to prophesy. He stood in the courts uh, of the Lord's house and said to all the people, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks that they might not hear my words so here we see jeremiah was sent to a particular place 
to prophesy a particular word that he was sent from the Heavenly Father to uh, speak to the people, but they hardened their necks, okay, that they might not hear the words, okay, so they didn't even want to hear what this prophet had to say to them. But instead, as we go into chapter 20, it says, uh, Now Pershur, he was the son of the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord. He heard that Jeremiah prophesied certain things, okay? So now this is uh, this guy, Pashur, was the son of a priest. He heard about Jeremiah, who was the prophet, who came and prophesied certain things that obviously the people didn't like because they didn't want to hear it, okay? Uh, and so, therefore, maybe it was some form of correction, but they didn't want to hear what the prophet had to say. And therefore, this is what happened. So it came to pass that on the next day that Pashur, he brought Jeremiah out of the stocks, and he said unto, unto him, The Lord hath not called thy name Pashur, but Magur Masabah. Okay? So the Lord changed this man's name, his name Pashur. Because uh, Jeremiah, because Pashur had put Jeremiah into bondage, basically, okay? Because it says right here, verse 2, Then Pashur smote Jeremiah, the prophet, and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. So he put him in bondage, okay? That's what the guy Pashur do. And it came to pass that after he had done that, Parshur brought forth the Jeremiah out of the stocks, okay? And as he was bringing him out, Jeremiah told him that the Lord changed his name and cursed him, basically, and said, For this, because of what he had did, says the Lord, Behold, I'll make you a terror to yourself and to all your friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and thine eyes shall see it. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive into Babylon and shall slay them with the sword. Okay, so he had pronounced an evil upon his leadership, upon his, his whole life, because this guy Peshur, I just want to make sure we understand this, he was uh, the son of a priest. Okay, so if he was the son of a priest, he was a part of the kingdom of God. Okay, this is very serious. And um, this man he still did not want to hear what thus says the Lord, his king, his creator, his God. He didn't want to hear what the word was said through the mouth of the prophet Jeremiah. And again, it must have been something that uh, had something to do with correction or uh, guidance. Because a lot of times, sometimes people don't want to hear that. And so therefore, Jeremiah was coming and speaking that from the heavens and the guy Pashur didn't want to hear so he put him in prison he put him and locked him up and so therefore since he did that there was a curse that was pronounced over him and his leadership my god oh jesus so uh and then therefore i'm going to skip around verses verse six and Pashur and all that dwell in thine house shall go into captivity so he was placed also into bondage, and thou shalt come to Babylon, and there thou shalt die, and shalt be buried there with all your friends to whom you have prophesied lies. Okay, so he prophesied lies also, my God. And this is what Jeremiah said based on what God had decided to do to the individual, and based on how he was feeling because of the people and the word that God sent him into the, the atmosphere to speak to the people and how they received it because he was broken hearted Jeremiah was very upset he says oh Lord thou hast deceived me and I was deceived thou art stronger than I and hast prevailed for I am in derision daily everyone is mocking me for since I spoke I cried I cried out and I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily Okay, he felt like because he came and spoke the word of God, what God has sent him to speak, the people began to mock him. The people didn't like the word that he was speaking. And he was, like I said, broken hearted. 
And then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. He didn't even want to speak the word anymore. But this, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. He couldn't stop. The word was bubbling inside of him like a fire of flame that it is. And it had to come up out of him, and it would just... It just came up out of him anyway, even though the people didn't want to hear what thus says the Lord. The Lord, because the word belongs to God, belongs to heaven. He was just a vessel God was using to pull it up out and to speak his uh, words that he wanted to be spoken in the earth. So then verse 10 says, For I heard the defaming of many, fear on every side. Report, say they, and we will report it. All my familiars watched for my halting, saying, Preadventure he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. Okay? So he heard what was being said by the mockers, how they were planning to destroy him because of what he was saying. Because, you know, and again, they may have thought that this word that he was saying was coming from him, but it was coming from heaven. That's another way they may have looked at it. Uh, and didn't want to hear what he had to say. But nevertheless, we must be careful because, again, if you know the anointing is descending and it has uh, the presence of an individual, it may go forward and out of that person's mouth the word from heaven many times, many days. So verse 11 says, But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Now this is what Jeremiah begins to say. Hallelujah. The Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors, my persecutors, they shall stumble and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, for, sh for they shall not prosper, and their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. But, O Lord of hosts, that triest the righteous and sees the reins and the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them, for unto thee have I opened my cause." So see, we see here in verse 12, the prophet asks for God to release his vengeance on behalf of what is being done to him, on behalf of him coming in the name of Christ Jesus, because he didn't come in his own name to, to present what thus says the Lord, the word that he was speaking to them. It's just that they did not want to receive it. They didn't want to accept the fact that it was the Lord speaking to them in such a harsh way. And so he said, Sing unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord, for he has delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evil, evil doers. And it says, uh, and I'm not going to read verse 14 to verse 18, because again, this is the sorrowous heart. This is the way Jeremiah's heart was being expressed from verses 14 to verses 18. He was so sad in reference to what was being done to him regarding him going before these people with the word that the Lord has sent up out of him for him to speak to them and how their reaction was to it. He was broken hearted. He didn't even want to live anymore. He felt like he was, you know, a, he just didn't feel good about it himself or about the word and he was very broken hearted. But nevertheless he says here in verse 12, but O Lord of hosts that tries the righteous and sees the reins and the heart let me see thy vengeance on them, for unto thee have I opened my cause. So he petitioned heaven for God's vengeance because he know, and he knows that the Lord has sent him, and therefore the people did not respect the word that was coming out of his mouth from heaven. So he called upon heaven for help because he knows that the Lord has already decreed and declared out of his word. Touch not my anointed, and do my prophet no harm. And he, Jeremiah was truly a prophet sent unto the people. All right, so that brings us to the conclusion of our part four, Touch Not My Anointed. Well, we just take a look at an example where a prophet calls for the vengeance of God on behalf of the words that were coming out of his mouth and the prophecy that he was sent to prophesy to the people and the reception that he received from the people and how they mocked him, ridiculed him, and ignored the words of God. And nevertheless, God was already, uh, no doubt, going to be releasing 
his wrath upon them anyway because they ignored his word okay so that concludes our revelation for part four touch not my anointing god bless you god be with you and i will see you on our next video as we continue to go forward with the word of god with revelations messages and bible studies from the heavens